Smart Scout is one of those tools you want to have on your radar. A year ago, I did a cold review of the platform. I've had a lot of good things to say. Scott Needham and I um, are well connected. We've been on each other's podcasts, you name it. So there's a, a good need to go back into the tool and show you some of the new things that they've been working on. Uh, really what made uh, Smart Scout hit the map literally was their map. What this map does is shows you every single location of every Amazon seller in the United States. You can really drill down in here and see like, okay, there's a big patch right there. What does this look like? You click on the stores, boom, you got their monthly revenue, their percent of FBA, their number of brands covered, their brand store name, all of the products they sell. This is really cool stuff. Very in-depth uh, detail work here. So you can see where, where all the pods of people are showing up and they do have bigger bubbles for based on the bigger the size. Uh, you know, you can see what the impact is. So this Orva store is at $54 million right there in downtown Manhattan area. Going over to their homepage just briefly to kind of walk you through how they are positioning themselves. So you can see in here, they're not just focusing on one particular type of Amazon seller. There, there is tools in here that are specifically good for online arbitrage or private labels or wholesale. Um, most of my audience and core audience is in the private label sector. Uh, in terms of features, they've got things for brands, subcategories, product research, seller map, seller search, UPC scanner, brand store, traffic graph, product history, FBA calculator, and ad spy. And I'm going to be going into each of these and talking in detail about them. There are several unique things that are inside of the Smart Scout tool that you literally can't find anywhere else. One of those is a breakdown of the brand data. Uh, so one of the cool things you can do is you can type something in like Toys R Us, or so let's think of a good one, let's go with Lego. And you can really see like everything about Lego and their market share. So here's the brand Lego. It does bring up anything with the word Lego in it. And you can see all the cursory brands if you're curious. Um, but over here, you know, average number of sellers on a listing is 11.7. So obviously, somebody that's going to care more about the average number of sellers is going to be one of the um, retail arb guys or wholesalers. But you can see average price, $90. That's a lot higher than I would have thought for um, all of Lego's products. $96 million in monthly revenue coming out of Lego. Um, monthly units, $1.7 million. Uh, average size of product, pretty small at 0.18. Average reviews, 4.4, which is slightly less than the 4.5 mark you want to see. Over 8,000 products, or nearly that is, uh, number of FBA sellers is only 4.9. So about half of the Toys R uh, <laughs> Lego Lego sellers are coming in from FBA. Uh, and then you can see, you know, Amazon.com is the dominant seller, primarily coming out of Vendor Central. So interesting data coming out of that. Here's a really good macro data page. This is going to be on the subcategory section in here. So if you're curious, like what category has the most sales, here you go. Home and kitchens, number one category, $8 billion in monthly revenue. Clothing at 6.9, health at 4.2, books at 3.8, electronics at 3.5. And you can actually drill down here. So I've got the patio lawn and garden open here, and you can drill down all the way soils down to mulch. Mulch at $741,000. So if you're curious, like, what is the total size of a subcategory? This is a great macro data piece where you can come in and see that. Tools, a little bit weaker than the other categories at $2.3 billion. Uh, but if you're curious, like, there's so many different kinds of tools. So, you know, I want to know how much oven mitts do on a monthly revenue. Feels a little bit low at $23,000. Uh, but, you know, uh, it's directional data that show you, like, how everything else is going on. Flashlights at $36 million per month. Uh, so you can see a lot of drill down of subcategories. You can up in the top here, you can type things in and search for it. So let's just type in, I don't know, fishing. Let's see what comes up. First thing that came to my mind. So let's see. So apparently in the books, hunting and fishing does 91,000 a month. Uh, sports and outdoor, 1 million per month. Uh, and you can see all the other fishing related things. So it's a very fast way to see like what's the size of a subcategory. So if you're curious, like, hey, you know, Hey, I'm really into chess because I'm a chess player. Let's see how much chess does. And it looks like uh, 999000 per month coming out of chess-related. Uh, well, that's in books, interestingly. I would have expected some puzzles and games. Okay, here we go. Uh, yeah, a little bit bigger in the puzzles and games sector with almost $21 million there. Hunter has decided to join me here as my co-pilot as we look at the next section, which is Ad Spy. So in here you can see uh, brand roll-up as well as a search term roll-up, and he's doing some dances back there. 
Amazon Basics at 52,000 search terms, that, that means that they have all of those different search terms inside of their ads or, or keywords. Uh, and so obviously Amazon owns a lot of product on Amazon. Uh, going over to the search term section, in here you can see the most searched search terms. And it's a lot easier to understand this data inside of Smart Scout, although this is technically available in some of the brand analytics data. It's just way cleaner over here. So down, down the list, you can see like, okay, what is the most important keyword right now? Well, holy crap, desk at 1 million per month. Not one I would have thought about. Valentine's Day decor. Obviously, this one's in uh, a very interesting spot right now, but this will drop down almost completely gone by Tuesday uh, as that rolls out. As we scroll down, you can see all kinds of different things. P5, PS5, N95. So masks still being highly sought after on the Amazon platform. Uh, 2022 planner, air fryer, Yellowstone season four. Okay. Interesting. Um, interesting to see that. So if somebody's trying to sell some Yellowstone season product, they probably can take advantage of that. And you just go down the list. It's just kind of curious to see what it looks like. And of course, uh, uh, you're going to have a different take on what you want to go after high volume search terms. If you've got a, a breadwinner product, or maybe you're going for the niche product keywords. Uh, but this gives you an idea. Let's see if we can. Yeah. So in here, you can actually use some uh, filtering. So let's say we want to go for keywords that are in 20,000 all the way up to 32,000. You know, just randomly coming up with numbers here, see what this looks like. So we're going to load that, see how quickly I can spit out like, Hey, here are all the keywords with certain, um, volume. So if you're trying to launch a new product and you're trying to find like something that's in your particular, uh, search volume cadence, you know how to launch a product that is in a certain volume of, of sales. This is an in interesting way to look at doing this. A lot of good data inside here. So dog food container, wouldn't have thought of that one at 31,000. Um, wall stickers, shower, chopper, house slippers, Hindi, deodorant, right? So you just get an idea of what these look like and, and get a lot of good information. So it's a very powerful tool to, to, to really just quickly get a macro view of an entire sector. Lastly, one of the other cool things is uh, some of the nice uh, usability things that have been uh, programmed by Scott Needham. You can click the button right here and it actually just loads it up right on Amazon. So it makes it easy to like toggle back and forth and understand it. Same thing with the brand section too. I can click there and I've got everything from Amazon elements showing up. All right, so that was cool macro data. Can we go down a layer? Yes, we can. Here's the product section. So I just did a search for my own ace and let's see how accurate this is. Age of Sage smudge sticks, all this data checks out. BSR rank at 35,000, estimates my revenue at $1,000 per month. Variation page has a little bit of a check mark there. Uh, monthly estimated sold unit at 128. This is uh, not as accurate as I was hoping it would be, but still directionally correct uh, on some of the things I'm up to. Does calculate the number of reviews though, however. Here is my actual sales date. I'm at 18,000 on the sales rank with 402 sales the last 30 days uh, and three times the sales expected there. So if we go back uh, to show this, it's possible that since I've had a lot better of sales velocity, it might just be pulling a little bit, a little bit lagged on the data potentially. You can also come in here and select some category data. So if you want to know everything in the home and kitchen section, then use this filter. This is probably the most common tool available in most of the competing product offerings, the jungle scouts of the world, if you will, where you can come in and do a bunch of product research. So the ability to have both the micro and the micro in the same location, I really do appreciate that, uh, which means you have like a one size all fits all tool for that. So if we want to come in here and just look at home and kitchen and let's say, hey, I know my sweet spot is right around 25,000 all the way to 35,000 on the BSR. Let's hit search, see what that looks like. So that pulls that up here so you can see all the monthly revenue data. You can come in here and filter it, min and max, just like that where you can click on the button and it goes up and down. Uh, very clean UI and the presentation of that I think is very worthwhile. Um, so you can see a bunch of data and you can go from brands, you can check the category, change, change how you're gonna filter this by a variety of different means. And the top filter there, review counts, number of FBA sellers. So if you're trying to avoid certain things where there's a lot of competition or number of sellers or variation, whether it has a variation in it or not, lots of different uh, revenue generation estimates as well. Continuing our chess theme on some of the research here, we've got a product. 
Adam is now joining me. Quite hard to shoot videos today. All right, so in here we've got the product traffic graph, and I typed in the word chess, and so you can zoom in. So uh, what this is, this is actually really cool. There used to be a tool on the market that was for free, and I forget the name of it, um, but you could see like a spider map. And so uh, Smart Scout has rebuilt this. So somebody that buys this is very likely to follow the spider map. So so you can see like, hey, if, if somebody purchased this, they're more likely to purchase this. And then if they purchase this, they're more likely to purchase these items down here. And you can see kind of the list and how it goes in. And so the bigger the spider, you can see where things are all pointing. So like this chessboard right here um, frequently is being viewed slash purchased by all these cursory products. They're all pointing into the middle of the spider web. So if you're curious, like, hey, um, pull in your own ASIN. Um, not every ASIN does appear. I did try some of mine. Uh, but if you're curious, like what cursory items you should add to your portfolio, it's a great way to do that. Um, and you can see like, oh, I need to build a, a chess book for somebody else. And then you can see like, okay, if you click into different various things and all of the traffic sources, um, traffic strength and the variations and the history and all of the different things. And you can kind of tie that back together when you're looking at your traffic graphs, your ad spying and your marketplaces. And so you can see like the strength of all. So it's a very powerful thing to see like how that looks. All right, so next we're going back into the seller map. I already kind of demoed in the intro of the video, the seller map. So I'm gonna go right into the seller search section. And in here, I've typed in my own brand uh, seller name that is Momster. And so you can see here all of my information. So my category, beauty and personal care, primary subcategory and incense, monthly estimated revenue at 70K, uh, and you can see all of the different full brands. I've got two brands, 90% FBA. Uh, gives a bunch of information and all of that good stuff. And so you can see like, okay, where's my growth? Is it up? Is it down? Um, so you get a lot of intel off of your competitors. So I would recommend just kind of coming into the seller search, put in those brand names and see what they're up to because you get a bunch of information. Going over to the product seller view next, I try to like look up my own stuff. I try to put the seller name Momster in here and... Uh, Oddly enough, it doesn't trigger correctly. So I think uh, I think that might just be a work in progress there. But if you put my seller ID in, you can see my top product, which is the incense that I just launched in the last couple months um, and see some information there. So monthly revenue estimated at 18,000, uh, 250 reviews, all of that stuff is fairly accurate information. Um, and we'll click into the ASIN. So it goes over to the product page, which you can see here uh, and a bunch of other interesting information. Baby Yoda's decided to go on top of my head now. I feel like the Mandalorian right now. So the next thing I wanted to try was like seller monthly revenue down here at 30,000. Sage has now joined me too. It's a family event video right now. Um, 30,000 through 50,000. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think the filters are working quite accurately. So you can see right here, we got the 16,000. I'm going to filter that downward here to see how accurate that is. And we got 2.1 mil. So I think some of these smart filters need a little bit of adjusting. Uh, work in progress there. Next is the FBA calculator. Um, now this is basically a recreation of what's on the website, but it's nice to have it right in the same tool. That way you don't have to filter back and forth between things and you can save some data. The really cool thing though is like, check this out. You can like scroll this up and down to see like what the dimensional weight will be because as, as you scroll past that, that actual weight and it rolls up to one or it goes up to two, notice how the fee changes, which is really cool. I did a video um, about a month ago showing like how you could save 11% on your, your uh, FBA fee packaging if you just knocked out an inch on each of the three different sections. So here you can play with the medians and the shortest side and the weight and see like what does your fee come out to. So this part right here is really, really cool. I don't think I've seen this anywhere else. Um, it's better than the calculator I put together in a spreadsheet, that's for sure. Next is the sales estimator. So you can select which category you're in. So if you're the number one in uh, bestseller ranking toys, estimated sales per month, this is going to be unit count at 44,000. So let's go over to, got home and kitchen here. So if you're in rank number one, 156,000 units going out each month. So let's go uh, all the way to, I don't know, right where kind of where I am with my incense at 35,650 units per month in home and kitchen. That gives you an idea of how many units on that particular SKU can go. And you got every single different category. So if you're curious, like how um, some of these tools uh, calculate their monthly sales estimates, this is the kind of algorithm that they're using, very similar. So this is just a little bit more public estimator 
for sale. So it's really neat to kind of check out on occasion. The UPC scanner is more for those that are doing arbitrage or wholesale. So they won't spend much time on this, just showcasing you what's on their website. You can import product lists to see a bunch of their data. Just simply by having the UPC, you can analyze a wholesale product list in a matter of seconds. So if you want to sign up for Smart Scout, you can use my affiliate link here. Buy me a Chipotle or a Mexican Coke if you do that. Just click on the link at the top of the video, and I thank you for your business. Appreciate it. You guys have a good one. We'll see you later.